Okay, in this video we're going to be doing some revision of statics, so these are topics that you should be familiar with, but in case you have forgotten, I'm just going to refresh your memory a little bit. So statics is all about basically having a body in space, it can be any shape or any size, and if you have a bunch of external forces and moments, which are essentially just rotation of forces, then they should all basically add up to zero. So the logic behind that is that if you want your body to remain completely static, so basically at rest, then the sum of the forces in all directions should be equal to zero, and the sum of the moments in all directions should be zero. So this one basically prevents the body from translating or moving across in space, and this one over here prevents it from actually rotating about a center point or something like that. So in general, if you consider the three-dimensional case, you're going to have three equations for this, fx, y, and z, and the same for the moments. So you're going to have moments about the x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis. And that gives you a total of six equations that you can work with. So generally, you can use it to solve for problems that involve some sort of determinate system, where most of the forces are known. But as we will find out later on in this subject, is that most structures that you look at cannot be solved through this basic method. So we're going to have to resort to more advanced analysis techniques that I'm going to teach you. But just to basically give you a little bit of a recap, let's have a look at these two structures here. So here we have a simply loaded beam, which has a force of P located somewhere one third from the left. So we have a, total, a beam of length 3L, and then this is one third from the left hand side, which has our support at A. So this is going to be a fixed support because we essentially just have something that is fixed at this point. And on side B, we have a roller support. So this one is actually free to move in side to side. So this is quite common for when you're designing things like bridges because when you have heat, metals use, uh, usually expand quite a lot. So you need to allow it for, you need to allow some room for it to actually deform. Otherwise, there are going to be some extra stresses in the material that are going to be de developed as a result of that heat expansion. And this is why we need a roller support on one of the ends. The other one is just going to keep it fixed in place. So let's have a look at how we can anal analyze this system. So it's a two-dimensional system, which means we're only going to have to use four equations. But we can actually find the reaction forces at the supports by simply using two equations. So I'm going to show you which ones. First of all, we're going to take the sum of the forces. So we know that if we draw a free body diagram, it is going to look the same, but we're going to have two extra forces here. Let's call it reaction at A and reaction at B. Now, normally, you would also have a reaction at A in the X direction. This is in the Y direction. For a roller support, you do not have any reaction forces in the, y, in the X direction because it is free to move. But over here, what we're going to have is essentially we're going to have this force equal to zero because this force over here is only acting on it vertically. So there are no reactions that are required in the x-direction to keep this balanced. Therefore, we only need to take a sum of the forces in the y-direction. So we can denote that by a little arrow and a plus going up. And we know that they should be equal to zero if this thing is to remain in static equilibrium. So now what we do is we take, okay, so we have one force going down. That's going to be minus p. We have R A Y plus R B Y. So basically that means that R A Y plus R B Y are going to be equal to P. And then obviously we have two unknowns. We need an extra equation and that one can come in the form of a moment equation. So let's take the sum of the um, sum of the moments actually about one of the two points. So what we can do here is we can select one of the points that lies exactly above one of these forces so that the moments about that point um, given by that force are going to be zero. So let's choose some of the moments about point A, which is just going to be this little axis over here. So some of the moments about A. And let's choose a direction. I'm going to choose this direction as positive. So that should also be zero. And now what we're going to have is P times the perpendicular distance to that center point, which is just L. And then we're going to have 3BY that's going in the opposite direction, anti-clockwise, which means we're going to write RBY times
times the distance and if we notice the distance of this one from the center point A is going to be 3L so we're going to multiply that by 3L okay so now we notice in this equation we can cancel out the length so it turns out that 3BY is going to be equal to P on 3 so now we have two equations, two unknowns. We already know what this one is, so we can just plug that in to solve for RAY. So RAY is going to be equal to P minus P on 3, which is equal to 2P on 3. And that's basically our answer. So normally this is the first step in analyzing any problem in solid mechanics. We need to solve for the reaction forces. Now, it depends on the type of support as well, because if you have a fixed support like a wall support over here, then what's going to happen is you're also going to have a bending moment reaction. So if we were to draw the free body diagram for this one, which I'm going to do over here, we have our beam of length L, the force P acting at the very end, and then over here we're going to have three reactions. We have a reaction O, in the y direction, reaction O in the x direction, and we're also going to have a moment. So if we look at the point of rotation O over here, we notice that this force is actually causing a rotation that is clockwise, which means our bending moment reaction, to balance that out, needs to be anti-clockwise. So we're going to call this moment O. Now the first thing we notice is that this force is acting completely vertical, so downwards, which means there are not going to be any horizontal reaction forces here. This is just going to be zero. So we only have two reactions to solve for. So in this case, we can start with some of the forces in the y direction. Let's choose up as positive. So we have minus P plus ROY. So it turns out that ROY is going to be equal to P. So we already found one of those forces. And then the next one is going to be the sum of the moments about point O, which is going to be equal to zero. So once again, let's choose this one as positive, so anti-clockwise. Now we have some of the forces at O. Now not to get confused with the same notation, I'm just going to write some brackets here so that we know that this is the moment at that point, but not the sum of the moments about. Okay, so we have this, and then we have minus P times L. So in this case, it turns out that the bending moment reaction is going to be equal to P times L. And that's it. We have our two answers there. And in the next video, we're going to do some more examples that are a little bit more advanced. But just know that knowing what your reaction forces for each type of joint is going to be is quite important as well.